Hello, it's been several weeks since I sanded all the rust spots on the roof and touched them up with primer and rust treatment and all that, but we haven't really had good enough weather for me to finish the job and properly repaint the roof. It's either been raining or it's been really warm and so the metalwork would be too hot to properly paint on it, or there's been one nice day but then followed by rain the next and what you really want is a series of relatively nice days where it's not going to rain and not get too hot. But it looks like my luck may be in as the next two or three days are supposed to be quite decent. So I'm going to make a start by sanding down the roof, just a little preliminary sand to provide a key for the uh, paint to go on. And I think I'll sand it by hand, which sounds laborious and will be, but it means I can have a jolly good look at everything as I go along. So that's my thing to do today. I used wet and dry sandpaper because it worked much better than just the dry stuff. This took a while, so like a lot of this video, I've speeded up the footage. Well, that is a good job done. The whole roof sanded and only a mild amount of blood on my fingers. I've noticed a couple of tiny little rust spots that I must have missed before, so I'll just sand those and prime them, and then hopefully all is set for painting tomorrow. Hey there, so glad you could join me. We're going to have a lot of fun painting a happy little boat roof today. And if you want to join in, I'll have them run all the colours I'm going to use along the bottom of the screen. And they'll appear in exactly the same order I have them here in my palette. Now, I've already gone over the whole canvas with a coat of liquid transparent, otherwise known as water. So, let's take our four-inch brush and go have some fun. You know, sometimes I think I'm amusing myself rather too much in these videos. Anyway, without a hint of phthalo blue or cadmium yellow to be seen, let alone any odourless thinners, I opened up my tin of paint. Per the instructions, and because I could see it had separated in the tin, this was given a thorough stir, using, of course, a screwdriver. Then, in my tray, lined with foil so as not to have to wash it out afterwards, I decanted a decent load of the paint. For each section of the roof, I wiped it over once more to remove any final remnants of dust and dirt, then began applying the paint. It can be brushed or rollered on, but I read that if brushed, you need to stipple it to get the non-slip texture, while the roller does that just by being a roller. Well, that took seemingly forever, but I'm reasonably pleased with the result. I never was that good at colouring in between the lines, so inevitably, even though I masked things off, I managed to merrily roll her straight over the masking tape and onto the uh, darker blue paint, but I'll tidy that up. Either way, I do think the roof is looking a lot better. It does need a second coat. They say to put it on quite thinly and do two coats, and for that it needs to now wait 24 hours. 
The weather forecast for tomorrow is also much like today. Very little chance of rain apparently, warm but overcast, so not bad painting weather. So I'm hopeful. Good morning. Day three of the great painting exercise and to be honest I'm a little frustrated. The weather forecast has said there was 0% chance of rain for three straight days. So what did I wake up to this morning? The gentle pitter-patter of rain on my fresh paint. So I've just gone all over the roof with a load of paper towels from the kitchen just mopping up little puddles which have left little marks which should come out when I put the second coat on. What's worse is that I was reading the data sheet for the paint and it says you must overcoat before it goes fully solid but you mustn't walk on it until it's fully solid. So I somehow need to put the second coat on by levitating myself over the paint rigging up some sort of harness like Tom Cruise in the first Mission Impossible film or something. This is the stuff they don't advise you of in the data sheets, that you need a jetpack so that you can apply coat two without actually standing on coat one. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that yet. Okay, I exaggerate slightly. The boat being only seven feet wide means I could stand at the side and paint from there but I found this didn't quite result in the same look to the paint as when I did it from on the roof. It also meant I had to stand on the gunnels on the far side as there's no pontoon there, so I was perpetually in fear of stepping back to admire my handiwork and falling in. I didn't though, and I'm pleased to say the second coat went on perfectly well. This is what the roof looks like with two coats applied. You get a better sense of it from high up. Now for the really fun bit. Not beating the devil out of it, but removing the masking tape to show the neat edges. This was most enjoyable. I am quite pleased with that. It's very bright, very light, but it's a very matte finish. It doesn't glare when the sun is out. And it is very non-slip as well, and certainly looks a whole lot better than the old roof did with the various spots of touch-up that I'd done on it. There is only one small problem. It is now so nice, so shiny, so new looking, that I can't bear to walk on it. And if I can't walk on it, I can never cruise again. Because if I go cruising, I will at some point have to walk on the roof, and I just can't bring myself to do that. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.